Hi class, my name is Brea Choquette and I'm here to talk to you about session 12. Um, some of the challenges and the responses to those challenges in the 1800s during this new century where a lot of significant Western culture was happening. Um, Arnold J. Toynbee on page 227 tells us that he summarized the consequences of the revolution and the reaction with these words. In the revolution, a sinister ancient religion, which had been dormant, suddenly re-erupted with elemental violence. This revenant was the fanatical worship of collective human power. And so I'd say like, I feel like the focus of this session and this chapter was that the challenges had to do with basically human development. Um, first, it was development of the mind. Um, so Isaac Newton, um, Darwin, um, and other great thinkers develop things within mathematic, mathematics and different sciences. And so intellectual life like just skyrocketed. And so um, one of the other quotes that came up during the reading was that life could be understood. A, a lot of the, the people of this time thought that life could be fully understood with reference to self. Um, they could figure out everything from within and they didn't need a reference to God. Immanuel Kant and Darwin were some of these thinkers during the time. And I think all of the questions caused challenges to uh, Christianity. Um, yeah. Um, and then the second thing was that they talked about was the that human happiness was the source for um, kind of the moral code. And thus we see a rise in um, just injustice. Um, so the response, I thought it was interesting the way that it started the chapter with the hymn that came out of the French Revolution, like in the midst of war and in the midst of this intellectual boom um, and attack on Christianity, um, there were still songs that were being made to praise God. Um, also, people like C.S. Lewis, Soren Kierkegaard, Lightfoot Westcott, these people in, in lieu of this intellectual um, boom and thinking that the world could be figured out without a God. Um, I felt like those those people, C.S. Lewis, Kierkegaard, Lightfoot, and Westcott, they asked the big questions that these other great thinkers were, were um, asking. They didn't shy away from those questions. They pressed in and then found God to be true, found God to be real. Um, and so I think like that was one of the main things that stood out to me was not that God, that not that our God was big enough or was, wasn't big enough to answer those questions, but sometimes people just didn't come to understand that. And so um, I'm encouraged by those people who sought the Lord and also sought the big questions and then saw that God was true, um, which was really cool. Um, also, there was a big push during this time um, for social outreach. Um, and so we see like William Wilberforce, who in the midst of slavery, um, chooses to believe that even though everyone else is doing these things, slavery and Christianity are incompatible. Um, and the same goes for Anthony Cooper when it comes to child labor. He saw that there were social, there were things that were unjust in society. And instead of just going along with things, he used his faith. He, um, lived out his faith by saying that child labor was not okay, even though the rest of the world was saying the same. Um, and so I think like that's, those are the two ways that thing, two ways that I saw people respond to the attack on Christianity um, that stood out the most. Just one, like I said, that we, in the midst of big questions, big thoughts, don't have to shy away from those questions because our God is big enough. And then two, when society says that something is right and it just simply isn't, we need to be like William Wilberforce or Anthony Cooper and stand firm in the way that we believe um, that Christ is calling us to live. Thanks and looking forward to hearing your thoughts.